Break your idealis muscle anatomy. The origin is the proximal two thirds of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Insertion is the lateral surface of the styloid process of the radius. Innervation is the radian nerve. Action, initiation of pronation, initiation of subination, and flexion of the elbow in mid-prone position. The brachioradialis muscle and tendon have an anatomical relationship that is very important and a lot of other features that is clinically significant. The superficial radial nerve runs distally in the forearm underneath the brachioradialis and lateral to the radial artery. You can get Wartenberg syndrome when the superficial radial nerve is compressed by the scissoring effect of the brachioradialis and the extensor carbi radialis longus tendon during forearm pronation. Cervical reticulopathy of C6, the brachioradialis reflex is affected. So the brachioradialis reflex is C6. So if you think the brachioradialis is invaded by the radian nerve, you will say that the brachioradialis and the wrist extensors have the same root, which is C6. So wrist extension and brachioradialis reflex come from C6 from the radian nerve. So in C6, you will find the brachioradialis reflex is affected. There is, will be weakness of wrist extension, and also there will be parathesia of the thumb and probably the index finger. The inverted radial reflex means tapping of the distal brachioradialis tendon produces ipsilateral finger flexion. It is usually seen when the spinal cord is compressed. The brachioradialis is also important in volar approach to the radius. You reach the radius by the approach between the brachioradialis, which is innervated by the radian nerve, and the pronator teres, which is innervated by the median nerve in the proximal forearm, and between the brachioradialis and the flexor carbioradialis in the distal forearm. Be careful of the superficial radial sensory nerve during that approach, especially in the distal forearm. Another important topic for the brachioradialis is the radian nerve. The radian nerve lies in the distal humerus anteriorly between the brachialis and brachioradialis. You must know that. If you want to approach the radian nerve in the distal humerus, it's going to be between the brachialis and the brachioradialis anteriorly. The radian nerve will give three branches first before it splits. The first branch is to the brachioradialis, followed by the extensor carbioradialis longus followed by the previs. The first muscle to get innervation from the radian nerve is the brachioradialis. The first muscle to show recovery of the radian nerve by EMG and nervous solids is the brachioradialis. So when you have a radian nerve palsy, you will test the brachioradialis muscle to see if there is any activity or function because it is the first muscle that will recover. Just remember, the nerve will recover about 1 mm per day 
if injury of the nerve at the spiral groove or at a specific location of a fracture, measure the distance between the spiral groove laterally and the brachioradialis or between the fracture and the brachioradialis. If the distance is 10 to 12 centimeter, then the brachioradialis will show activity approximately after 120 days, which is about four months. Just be patient and follow the recovery. If after four months there is no recovery of the nerve, then exploration of the radian nerve should be done and possible tendon transfers. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.